If you know me, one of my biggest things is to work smart, not hard when it comes to hair. And on that point, there's absolutely no reason to do curls that are only gonna last you one day. Number one, you're busy. And that's way too much time and effort to put into your hair for a style that's only going to last you one day. And number two, the longer you go between doing curls, the less heat and the healthier your hair is going to be. So if you can get your curls to last for days, your hair will be healthier and better looking in less time than you were ever spending before. We're working smart, not hard hair. And I know a lot of you are saying, there's no way my hair will ever last three days with a curl in it, but I promise you it will. You just need to know a couple secrets and it's actually really easy. I've built my salon on getting curls to last for days in the Florida humidity, and this video is going to show you exactly how I do it. If you don't know me, my name is Chris. I own a hair salon called Live Love Locks where we test out products and bring the best ones to you. I make these videos because way too many people struggle with their hair and I don't want you to be one of them. Hair is actually easy when you know the shortcuts. If you're spending a ton of time and money on hair, you don't need to, I'm here to help. One of my clients used to wash and curl her hair every single day, and that is a massive waste of time, money, and products. But she thought that she was stuck doing it because her curls would fall out and her hair would get greasy really quickly. So when she came in for the very first time and I promised her that her curls would last at least three days, she didn't believe me at all, but she did make an appointment for the following week. And when she came in for that second appointment, she was shocked because her curls actually lasted her four days. They didn't fall out and they didn't get dirty. She had me run her through exactly what we did to get her curls to last for four days so that she could try to recreate it at home. And this video is everything I told her plus a little bit more. First off, it doesn't matter how amazing your curls are if your hair gets oily really quickly. If you have oily hair on day two, you're never gonna make it to day three or four because you're gonna have to wash and start the whole process over again. That's the opposite of what we're going for. I want you to have fresh, good feeling curls for day three, four, five, or as long as you can possibly go. So step one is getting your hair to the point where you can keep it clean for three days so you can wear your curls for three days. And when we're talking about your hair being dirty, we're not talking about mud or dirt or dust or that type of thing. We are talking about oil. I want you to think of your hair getting dirty just like you would a frying pan. There's no way you would cook bacon in a frying pan and then clean it halfway and put it back in the cabinets where it still has oil on it. There's no way you would do that. But we do that all the time when we're washing our hair. We don't get all the oil out of it. Because we leave some oil in it, it gets gross really quickly. And that leftover oil in your hair is the reason you're not able to make it to day three. If you got your hair completely clean, it would stay fresher and cleaner much longer. If you've ever heard somebody say, oh, my hair gets dirty on the very first day it's because they're not getting the oil out there they had oil in their hair the whole time and it's making it gross so let's talk about exactly how to fix this and number one you know what I'm gonna say you need to be using a professional shampoo and conditioner if you're using something like Dove Aussie Pantene or something similar they're super watered down you can wash your hair with them 10 times in a row and it will not get clean. These are not adult shampoos. And number two, you need to wash your hair twice. If you think back to that pan of bacon that we cooked and all the oil that was in that skillet, there's no way you're getting all that oil out of there on the first wash. On the first wash, you get a little bit of oil out, but after a certain point, you're just swirling the oil around. It doesn't do any good. You need to rinse it out and start over with fresh soap and start scrubbing again. Your hair is the exact same way. You need to do two washes. And when I say two washes, you don't have to use a full thing of shampoo like you would on your one wash. You can use less shampoo on the two washes so it works out. And quick tip here, your shampoo only creates suds and lather and bubbles when there's no more dirt and oil for it to bind to. So because of that, what you'll notice is on your first shampoo, you won't get that much suds and lather. And that's totally fine because you're going in for a second wash. And on your second wash, you should get a ton of suds and lather. That's how you know that your hair is actually clean. So if you're shampooing your hair and you're not getting tons of suds and bubble and lather, your hair is not clean yet keep going. If you want a full guide on this, there's actually a lot of shampoo tips that people don't know. I'll link it right up here. This trick only works for professional shampoo though. If you use Suave or Dove or something like that, those things have chemicals in there that will give you suds whether the hair is clean or not. So it's only for professional shampoo. And the last thing you need to do to make sure your hair will stay clean for at least three days is to get rid of any heavy products that you're using. Even if you do an amazing job with your shampoo and wash, if you come into that perfectly clean hair with a heavy product, it is going to weigh down your hair and make it feel gross really quickly, and you're never gonna make it to day three like that. You'll see a lot of videos with stylists doing tutorials on how to get like huge volume and big hair and tons of product and all this stuff, and that's fine for photo shoots and weddings and things like that. But the thing is, that's terrible advice for an everyday hair style. It's so much product makes it so you can't touch your hair, you can't run your fingers through it, and it gets gross really, really quickly. So tons of product, great for events, great for photo shoots, stuff like that, 
not for your everyday style. Your everyday style, you want to use as little product as possible. So if you're sure that you're washing your hair correctly and you did everything right and you're starting with fresh and clean hair and it still gets really dirty on you the next day, it's more than likely a heavy product. So moving on to the actual routine here, let's pretend that you just wash your hair in the shower and you just got out and it's time to start applying products. The first product you should ever put on your hair is always going to be leave-in conditioner. You use a regular conditioner in the shower that put a ton of moisture in your hair, which is amazing, but you're going to lose all that moisture. It's going to leak out of your hair unless you seal it in with a leave-in conditioner. Think of leave-in conditioner as a Yeti cup for your hair. It forms a barrier around your hair to keep it in pristine condition. None of the water is gonna get out and it won't be exposed to the elements like it normally would. Your next product is going to be a blow dry cream like Red Ken's Big Blowout or Olaplex 6. And if you're wondering like, wait a second, why am I using a blow dry cream? I just wanna skip straight to the iron. I promise you that is not the best way to do it. Stick with me here. You need a smooth base of hair underneath your curls. That way they don't start to separate or get frizzy on day two or three. And the absolute absolute best way to do that is by blow drying your hair first. With a blow dryer or blow dry brush, doesn't really matter. How long your style lasts is based on how smooth it was in the first place. And hair, smoothness is the same as freshness. It's just like milk in the refrigerator. The fresher the milk is, the longer it's gonna last before it spoils. It's the exact same thing with hair. The smoother it is when we start out, the longer it'll take before it starts to frizz up or fall out and get gross on us. That's why we like to blow dry first, so we have a nice, clean, smooth base on the bottom, which makes the curls last way longer. And I know what you're thinking, why would I spend extra time to blow dry and do curls? I promise you. It makes it last so much longer, you're actually saving time in the long run. I promise you, try it out, you won't be disappointed. So now let's get to the actual curls. When it comes to the technique that we use, we're looking for three things. Number one, we want it to be healthy for the hair. Number two, we want it to look good. And number three, we want the curls to last a long time. Let's go over the different ways to do curls and talk about which one of them is the best. First type of curls are roll-up curls. These actually require you to learn how to use a clamp and roll the iron up. And in return for learning how to do all of that, you get curls that do a lot of damage to your hair and don't last very long. I don't recommend roll-up curls at all. Roll-up curls fall out of your hair really, really quickly because they are flat wrapped. And flat wrapped curls will never last for a very long time. If you look at a rope, they're always twisted. It's never like a flat, straight layer of the fibers of the rope. They're always twisted because that makes it much, much stronger. Relating this back to your curls, you want your curls to be twisted too. When you do curls, if one side of the curl starts to fall out and they're twisted, the other hair fibers will actually pick up the slack and they will support the entire curl and they won't let it fall right out. I know some of you out there are like, Chris, I don't know what you're talking about. I do roll-up curls all the time and they last me just fine. But the thing is, you still want to switch away from roll-up curls because if you do the one with the twist, you can put the iron on there for half the time. That's half the heat and that much faster you're gonna finish with your hair. And speaking of how long you have your hair on the iron, roll-up curls do it all wrong. They actually end up with the iron on the bottom of your hair most of the time. And that's a big problem because the farther you go down on your hair, the more delicate it is. And the more heat you put down there, the more chance you have to cause damage. But there's another problem with putting most of the heat towards your ends. And that problem is that wherever the heat is, that's where the hold is. You want the hold to be at the top of the curl because that has to support the entire curl beneath it. If you put heat on the ends, you have a weak curl on top, a strong hold on the bottom where you don't even need it. So we've established that roll-up curls are dead and we don't want to do those anymore. Let me show you something that I call upside down curls. They'll make your hair look way better, add much more hold so your curls last way longer and it's much healthier for your hair. So what you're gonna do is this, pretend your curling iron is a wand. It doesn't matter what kind you have. If you have a clamp, just leave it open and pretend that this is a wand. The hair guys did us a huge favor on this one because this is actually the best kind of curler is out there and it's the easiest one to learn. All you have to do is this, hold the curling iron upside down, wrap the hair around it, and then let it fall. That's all you have to do. You'll notice when you do this, you wrap the top of the section first, and that's exactly what we want. Most of the heat is going to go to the top, which means most of the hold is going to go towards the top, which means we're gonna get plenty of support for the rest of the curl. It's not gonna pull it out. You're getting a nice, long-lasting curl. You'll also notice that you don't have to do anything to get a twist. As you wrap the hair around the iron, it's naturally going to twist. It's going to do it all for you. Just go with it. The upside down curl is super easy. You can do it with a regular iron. You can do it with a wand. It doesn't really matter. Any tool you have will work. Hold it upside down, wrap it around, and just let it fall. It's as easy as it gets and the best curl you can possibly do. 
You also want to keep in mind that you should be doing curls tighter than you want them to look when you're done. The reason for that is when the hair comes off the iron, it's still hot. As it cools off over the next 30 to 45 minutes, it's going to fall a little bit. So if your curls look absolutely perfect when they come off the iron, they're not going to look perfect 30, 45 minutes later because they're going to fall a little bit. And I see you out there, you're probably asking Chris, how do I control how tight or loose my curls are? It's a great question. There's a couple ways to do that. Let's go over them. The first option you have is to change the size of the iron that you're using. A big iron like this will give you bigger, looser flowing waves. A smaller iron like this will give you tighter, more defined curls that last longer. So it's really just personal preference of whatever you like. The second way to easily control how tight or loose your curls are is to take a bigger or smaller section. If you take a bigger section and put it on the iron, it's going to be looser and more flowing. If you take a smaller section, it's going to be tighter and longer lasting. The third and final way to control how tight or loose a curl is, is to control how long you actually keep it on the iron. If you keep it on the iron for a long time, it'll be more tight. More heat means more hold, so you'll get a nice tight curl. If you only leave it on the iron for a little bit, you'll get a more loose and flowing curl. You also want to remember that every day your curls are going to fall a little bit. Gravity, it's totally natural. So what that means is that if you do a really loose curl on day one, by day three, it's going to have fallen out a decent amount. So you may not have much left. But if you do really tight curls, they'll definitely still be there on day three. It's something to think about, something to play with do what you want one thing a lot of my clients like to do is have tight curls on day one on day two brush them out a little bit to make them almost beach wavy and then on day three brush them out even more so you have like a loose flowing style it almost looks like you did a new hairstyle every single day because the curls look so much different all right there's one more thing that you need to know about that can make or break your curls and that is heat protection. You already know about hairspray and all of that, but there's only so much hold you can get from a hairspray. And if you add a lot, it just makes your hair feel gross and you don't want your hair to feel gross for three days. So it's super valuable to use a heat protectant that has a ton of hold on it. If you want super long lasting curls, you want to use Kenra's Thermal Styling Spray. Again, I'm in Florida. This is the key to getting curls to hold a really long time in the humidity of Florida. If you want to learn more about how to use this, because it's not that easy, I'll link a video up here. I also want to go over a few tips to make the curls that you do actually look better. And the first trick for this is to make sure that your curls always go away from your face. The first time I heard that, it made me stop and I, I had no idea what it meant. So I have a different way of teaching it that gives you the same effect to make sure your curls are always going in the right direction, but it's much easier to understand. The rule that I like to teach is the iron always goes behind your hair. So if you're on this side, the hair will go in the front and the iron will go behind the hair and then you'll start wrapping it the exact same thing on the other side the hair will go in front and the iron will go in the back if you keep saying to yourself that the iron goes behind the hair you will always get it right every single time whether you're on this side or this side doesn't matter the iron always goes behind the hair if you remember that you'll make sure you never get that cousin it effect where your curls like collapsing in on your face and making it look weird you want your curls to frame your face and go away flowing away from your face the second tip is to control the way the hair comes off the iron ideally you just let it fall right off the iron onto your hand but whatever you do resist the temptation sometimes the hair will get stuck on the iron resist the temptation to pull the iron away or do whatever or anything like that it's not what you want to do the reason for that is the curl is still hot and it's not going to set until it cools off so if you pull the iron away and straighten the hair you're going to ruin the curl and it's going to look different than all your other curls it's gonna be weird. And the last thing you need to do is protect your hair. The biggest predator out there that's looking to get your hair is actually water. So the last thing you ever wanna do is get caught in the rain or be out in the humidity for a long time. And really the scariest thing ever for a curl is actually a shower. You may not realize it, but when you turn on the shower, there is a ton of humidity in the room. And I promise you that a bunch of water is bouncing off your shoulders, up into your hair, and water ruins your curls. Water ruins every hairstyle. You really need to be using a shower cap. Every time you're in the shower and you're not washing your hair, you must be using a shower cap. It makes a massive difference. Your hair will stay fresher, cleaner, and the curls will last. The shower cap that you get needs to have a terry cloth lining on the inside. You do not want a shower cap that's plastic on both sides. The terry cloth actually helps absorb a little bit of the humidity because it's going to get in there. If I'm making this sound extravagant, it's not. It's like 10, 11, 12 dollars on Amazon. Highly recommend you get it. All that being said, I want to leave you with one more thing. Like everything in life, the first time you do something, you are not going to be amazing at it and that's 
totally fine. It's not a big deal. You're going to need to practice this a few times. I promise you the strategy is tried and true. It's been tested many, many times. Stick with it a couple times. By the third or fourth time, you'll be really impressed with yourself and you'll start getting compliments from your friends. And you can tell those friends that it's not about working hard. It's about working smart. You only touch your hair every three or four days and then you put it on autopilot. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I do my best to get to every single one of them. We usually have a pretty awesome conversation down there. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one, guys.